Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this very simple but uh, very popular DNA uh, necklace for Rhino 3D modeling. Are you ready? Let's get started. One thing is very important for jewelry cat design compared to other is the the dimension. So we need to make sure that how big that we want this one, and we want to model exactly. Um, so I'm drawing a line right here as a reference, and with this line, I need to create that spiral things. So I'm gonna coming into line work command, and we have this is called helix. And I would like to choose the axis from the end to the end for this one. And you can decide how many turns that you want on this one. I basically, I don't need a lot of them. So I might just need to have two and see how wide that you're going to have it. Or maybe two is too much, then you can change to 1.5. You don't want to have a lot of a turning right there. Okay, so now then we have that one, as you can see, is turning this way. So once you have that, I'm going to turn into the red color. It's easier for you to see. We need to have the other one. So I basically want to use a rotate tool and copy equal yes. We're going to starting with the zero and just flip it 180 degree. And so we'll have two of the curve like this. Now with this two curve, now we have those two curve, we are going to creating the cross section. So I basically want to draw a straight line, go from here to here and to creating the surface, I'm going to use the surface command and you got the sweep to rail and you got rail one, rail two, and this is the cross section. So then you will get this surface right there. Now with this surface, you also notice that there are some line over there and those are the line for cross section that we can have to, uh, we can extract from that. But there are too many lines there. And the reason it has too many lines is because our curve has a lot of points. As you can see, all the line is aligned with those points, right? So for our purpose, we don't need that many lines. Uh, we are going to rebuild this guy. So as you can see, we got 30 point, uh, 57 point all the way around. And um, I would like to uh, keep it, this state as two for our V. We just need to go from beginning to the end. But I would like to reduce a lot. So maybe 24 of them, as you can see the line get less over there or maybe just 20 depends on how many gap that you want to have in between so once you have that you can see that uh, our line is significantly to reduce and so the next thing is we need to um, extract those line out Right. So that means hiding all the curve is easier for you to understand. Select all the curve and I'm going to hide it there. So this is the surface we're going to deal with. First, I'm going to come into the curve. You have curve from the object and then you can extract the different things. In this case, I want to extract the wireframe. So let me hiding this surface also aside with extract the wireframe, all you see is my contour line and the edge line there, right? So then let me turn this off as well. I'm simply going to select everybody and kind of a pipe it. I wanted to pipe them in the radius for point six, for example, then I will get this looking over here. This is how we getting our DNA necklace. Now, one thing I will say, if you are piping exactly the same, and if you're looking at a rendering, a lot of time you'll get this little thing to stick it out because it's the uh, round surface. It's a round cap over there. So it doesn't look good at that, at that uh, kind of a setup. So a lot of the time uh, I will actually, as you can see, this point is, is touching there. So actually a lot of time I won't, using exactly the same outline. The middle one, it could be the same uh, diameter 
radius uh, for piping. This one and this one, I actually want to pipe it just a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead with the pipe again. It was 0.6, so let's try 0.7, and let's take a look on our render again, and you'll notice that everything is hiding much, much better. That's all you need to do to make them hiding there without uh, the ugly bump showing up on the rendering. Once you got everything, just go ahead and boiling unit together. So then we got this piece. The second things we wanted to do is chain. Usually what we do with the chain, uh, we need to hook them on the jump ring there. So our jump ring need to make sense that the chain can go through. Depends on how thick of your jump ring is, the whole it's important for the first chain to go through. We're gonna size the jump ring into, into the proper thickness and I'm going to mirror to the other side over here to be symmetrical. So now this is the part it's going to be cast on this jump ring. I will suggest you to have a 0.8 millimeter in diameter or 20 gauge wire. In that case, it will be much better uh, for the casting result. Anything thinner than that, you might have a hard time after polish, it might be fall off, okay. Then that's making chain. Uh, one thing I want to mention here for the chain making, we pretty much, it's going to be for rendering purpose, not for the casting purpose. Most of the time, the chain won't be cast. They will be the ready-made product, but we want to show it in the rendering, right? So it make more sense as a necklace. So then I have the chain is like this. You can, if you don't like it, or if you can change one of the components, so one is round, one is oval, or you can change both of them it to be oval, it's up to you. But one thing you want to do, make sure that uh, even though we don't cast this, we still need to make it look like it makes sense, uh, which means two of them need to able to fit in into that hole there. Right. So uh, disregarding what shape that you are going to do, you need to make sure that it's not touching uh, because it won't look right on the rendering. Okay. So once you make sure that it's working in there, we need to uh, start making this component. So let me put it on the side and we actually want to group it first. So let me draw a line. This line is going to go from here and we're going to going up like this and like this and like this for our rendering purpose we don't need to go all the way up and making a loop it's just for whatever that we can see there uh, for when we're doing the rendering and then we are going to tilt it in the angle move it back here and that's for our first set right so we want to try to make sure that it follow the direction of the curve there then the command we are going to use for this one is coming into the transform. You have a ray, a long curve. Then you're going to array this object, enter and hit on this curve. It's going to ask you how many do you want it. We kind of need to guess. So I'm guessing 20 and click OK. And notice that the second set is not inside of here. That means I need more than 20, right? So I can uh, do it again, undo and click on the object, enter and click on this curve. So I need to guess in a little bit more. So maybe 28 and we click OK. And as you can see, it is this one that's touching here. So 20 is too not enough 28 is touching so now i need to I, I kind of knowing it has to be somewhere in the middle so i'm going to guess 25 and or you can just measure the distance and using the distance instead okay so now you can see it's perfectly fall into it and coming out like this right so let's take a look on the uh, perspective view and make sure it is in the right position and if it is we are going to coming over the front view and I'm going to select bunch of them instead of the jump ring and I'm simply just going to mirror to the other side. All right, so let's double check at the front view and this will be our DNA necklace. Uh, 
little trick like this to use a Rhino in different jewelry application. I have a whole course in the systematic way to show you how to use a Rhino to create jewelry piece. If you're interested, please check on the link at the right top corner. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. See you next.